Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Carl Ketchum as you know. And today we're going to be having a round table discussion with some of the members of the Physician Society um, in the committee specifically. So I've invited some of my close friends in the committee and we're going to be talking about mental health and mental health specifically in the context of being a student within the Faculty of Health Sciences. So with me, I've got Tamsin over here, I've got Ndokoza over here, and I've got Ariel over here. So Tamsin is our Head of Committee Development, and she's also a Vice President. So how's that been? I mean, I think it's been fine. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have a really good team, so I think overall, as a group, we work really well, yeah. so it's been good. And you two are both, they're both new members to our committee. How has that been? Uh, it's been nice. It's been really, really, really nice. I enjoy like the family atmosphere, just feeling welcome. It's really nice. Mm. I mean, the community is very, very welcome. So it is nice to sort of feel part of something. Yeah, but mental health is that topic that we always tend to run away from. We never really want to have in-depth discussions about mental health, just because it's such a you know touchy situation and it's a it's a it's something that we don't know enough about. And some people just don't want to acknowledge the fact that mental health is that topic that we need to be discussing. So in this video, we're not going to be running away from those discussions. We're going to be talking about some of that stuff. But please, I want to uh, put out a disclaimer out there that we, none of us, are you a psychiatrist? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a psychiatrist. So none of us are psychiatrists or psychologists. So if you do see, um, find that some of these stuff are triggering, or if you find that some of the information doesn't really sit well with you, um, please do go see someone, get some help. There's the Office of Student Success if you have VITS, CCD, and there are so many other people, the SADAC Helpline, Discovery, so many other people and resources that you can contact. So please um, do understand that none of us are psychiatrists and this video is not meant to help you with diagnose any mental health conditions. With that being said, Let's start this discussion. So, unfortunately, we are in the profession that puts us most at risk um, for you know, suicide ideation, suicidal ideation, and completion, right? Uh, within the health sciences, no matter uh, whether you are in medicine or whether you are in any allied healthcare profession or in the medical sciences. Um, so, I just wanted to pose this question to you guys. What do you think? puts us at this risk where can we start with times? Um, I would say the pressure. The pressure of the fact that you're always going to be looking after someone and someone's life, like you're responsible for that. And I think that's a lot of pressure. Um, and then I also just think the competition of health sciences in general. It's, it's very competitive. There's a lot of pressure, you know. So I think that always adds to the anxiety and the stresses, yeah. That's so true. And I mean, Ariel, as a first year, have you felt that sense of competition? In the health sciences, or how is that good for you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, my class is very competitive. Everyone's out to get the top marks. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the reason outside professionals are at such a risk of suicide is because, number one, the workload is just insane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm only in first year, but I can see yeah. that's going to pick up. Yeah. Um, because that's, an, as Tammy said, I think the responsibility of someone's life is always going to be in your hands. It's quite a lot to carry. Actually, I saw somewhere that we tend to dissociate medical doctors and medical students from each other. So we say that doctors are the ones that are going to be, you know, like experiencing all of these mental health situations, but they forget that medical students are trained to be doctors and therefore see a lot of the things that doctors see and go through a lot of the things that doctors go through. It's important to note that this goes with every degree. With every person, mental health can affect anyone, you know. Um, but anyway, um, I wanted to ask actually, do you, and I'm going to pose this question to you as well, do you feel like as a medical student you have the same stresses that a doctor would have? Okay, well, I think I touched on two main things being one, the massive worker, and two, the responsibility. So I think for me, at this point in my medical career, the responsibility isn't paid. I'm not seeing patients. Um, but I think in terms of the workload, the stress is mm -hmm. definitely good. I think yeah. you guys have that. Yeah. Um, 
So in that sense, I think we do experience some of the same stresses as medical professionals, mm -hmm. but not to the same extent. We do, definitely. And I think as you go along the years, the, the things that stress you change. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that as we go across the longer years, that sense of responsibility that you feel detached from, you start to feel way heavier ass because now I'm like, yo, if I don't learn this, then I'm gonna be one day with this patient on my own and then I'm not gonna know that particular fact or mm -hmm. I won't know that contraindication for that drug or whatever the case may be. It's just scary mm -hmm. to think about it. Anyway, next question is have you ever contemplated dropping out of the baby? Really? No. <laughs> I have felt the pressure. I have felt the pressure exactly what Tanzan was saying. The pressure of like staying on top, of being your best. Because we live in a culture that's like so driven by staying on top, but then we forget that we're human beings and we're not exempted from or immune from any like failures or just like facing those challenges head on. And I think with me, I have felt like I'm not adequate enough, maybe I'm not good enough, but like thinking of the fulfillment that I'll have one day just like to serve and to help. It just helps me make like feel better about myself to want to work harder without pushing myself like over the age and just like being too hard on myself. It's so, rare, I think it's so good. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so good. rare. I think if we look at it that way, that will change a lot of how we go through mm -hmm. how we go through. That's such a positive way of thinking. I for one have <laughs> definitely <laughs> Contem not once, <laughs> multiple times, uh, dropping out of a degree. Sometimes you just, sometimes you have a day, you're just like, is this, can I do this? Can I continue doing this? Am I capable of doing this? But then the way you look at it is actually what helps you to deal with that because, like, there's so many positive things that you can take out of the situation, out of your school as a whole. Because mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of growth we've had as people. That's true. From first year to now, I mean, I've done it. You know, it's crazy. Okay, so we're going to quickly just do a small thing where I'm going to ask each of us to raise our hands if we've ever experienced one of the things I'm going to mention. This is just to show that out there, whatever you feel like you're going through, you are most probably not a little. So raise your hand if you've ever experienced burnout. Raise your hand if you've ever experienced anxiety. Raise your hand if you've ever experienced depression. Raise your hand if you've ever experienced imposter syndrome. <laughs> the point of this exercise isn't to diagnose each other with a certain illness or whatever. Um, but the point of this is to show that whatever you're going through out there, you're not alone. But the other thing is for you to be able to recognize when you feel like you're starting to experience one of, and these are just the common mental health conditions that we as health science students experience. But when you realize that you're feeling one of these things, you can actually then do something about it. We're just going to quickly talk about what our understanding of these different things are, just briefly. So burnout is for me, and again, I'm just emphasizing the fact that I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, so they might have different definitions about something. But it's for me what it looks like, and I'm just going to use an analogy of you, you, you kind of go through this beginning stage where you're on autopilot, you just keep doing things, you just keep doing it, you just keep going, and going, and going. And you reach a point where you just can't do anything. And it's almost as if you, you sort of feel paralyzed to do that particular thing that you need to do. And medical school tends to um, bring that out in us because I think the biggest reason is because we barely have holidays. Okay? And as you go along the years, the holidays decrease. <laughs> it's just like, why would you do that? Okay, It makes sense, but it also doesn't make sense. Anxiety, what do you think about anxiety? Um, I first think fear. Fear of not being good enough, fear of not measuring up, and just like doing the wrong things, like feeling like I know this, but what if I don't know it? Mm. So I get for me the anxiety is like, do I know this? Mm. Will I will I be what I want to be? Will I achieve my dreams? It's just the fear of just not being good enough mm. for me. Honestly, it's just it all originates from fear. Where have you 
where has medical school brought our anxiety to you? And then secondly, can you tell me a little bit about your understanding of depression? Okay, so in terms of anxiety, I think, and it's a sad thing, but I think anxiety has become one of my norms. Like I'm in a constant state of the doubt, the fear, the the not measuring up as well, I would say. Even if you just look at medical school in terms of it almost feels like a constant, like for example, a constant assessment. You always measure yourself based off previous you or yourself versus someone else, or whatever the case may be. And then that anxiety starts to kick in, especially during exam time, during all of those things. Um, and I feel like sometimes it doesn't go away, you just learn how to cope with it better. And other times I feel like it's exacerbated. In terms of depression, I don't want to say depression, but more depressed mood yeah. than depression. Um, it's that constant feeling down and you don't know how to pick yourself up. And it's, I think in a way, obviously people say you should lean on others. And in a lot of situations you feel like you can't mm -hmm. because you don't want to quote unquote burden that person or other people with what you're feeling and what you're going through. I guess it emanates into everything that you do mm -hmm. and you're just constantly low. Imposter syndrome is this thing where you just don't feel like you, you feel like an imposter. You feel like you don't belong there. That, you know, actually getting into medical school, this was a mistake. Like, I don't know, maybe they just made a mistake and my name just got here somehow. And it's not supposed to be there. You feel like you don't deserve the marks you're getting. You feel like you don't deserve to have gotten to this particular year in your life. So, I mean, it's still very early days for you, but do you, and have you, how do you think you've ever experienced the pasta So I think that I definitely have, um, you know, only about one block into medical school. Um, and for me, it sort of comes out the most when something goes right in my life. So for example, um, if I was really battling with a section in physics, and then I get a test back, and wow, well, I actually did better than I thought. You, I sort of, you, you feel a few minutes of satisfaction and then you go back to, okay, this is a mistake. It was yeah. something that you, uh, it was multiple choice. So I was just able to, to guess um, in a particular way. And after this, um, I need to go back and ground because I do not deserve to be. So I think for me, that's the way um, that imposter syndrome can manifest in I have a close friend who was a sibling um, quite high up in medical school. Um, near the end. And from hearing her experiences of just how brutal it gets in terms of the work and the lack of sleep and mental health issues, I sort of think, okay, this is the easiest year of medical school, this is the easiest block of medical school. You know, we shouldn't, I shouldn't be feeling the pinch. I shouldn't be feeling like this is a massive work here. Um, but as you told me, it's okay to feel like at the moment this is a lot for you because you do have to adapt and I feel like you do adapt all the time. Okay, so let's just hear what coping mechanisms are you able to Okay, so I think, again, like you said, it's very individual. What works for me might not work for anyone or anyone else. But in my life, what I found to be most effective would be just trying to maintain consistency in the areas you can control. That could be maintaining a regular exercise routine. It could be contacting your close friends on a daily and weekly basis. And it could be you know, a regular sleep schedule or just maintaining as much consistency as you can. Bear in mind that you are in a very tough degree and that you can't always be consistent in every single aspect of your life. For me, it's been just being kind to myself. Mm -hmm. Just being kind, taking a break when I need to take a break, but that doesn't mean like I'm completely just like chilling. Mm -hmm. But like taking a break and being kind to myself and just being, working on being the best person I can be, not only for my patients in the future, but for my friends around me as well. So I can be my best self for them and for myself. So I personally, I take, I actively take time away from me too. So I fill my schedule up with other things. The other thing I do is actually fill my schedule up. And you know, <laughs> some people look at it like, again, like you said, some people look for you, some things do it. But for me, I find a full schedule helps me to actually, when I'm dedicating time to get to actually do it. You know, I know that I only have this limited amount of time to do that particular thing, so therefore I'll do it the best time. And then the rest of the time I play music, I'm like cooking, you know, having the little friends, going out for coffee, whatever the case may be. I would say switching off completely, like switching off my phone, like 
like I take active time to just not be on my phone, not look at emails, not none of that kind of stuff. And just spend time either by myself, like figuring stuff out for me, you know, working on yourself, or being with friends, being with family, surrounding yourself with people who do support you and who are there for you. And I think that really helps almost like feel you in a way. So yeah, I'd say that definitely. And spending time with my dog. <laughs> So we've seen how the world will progress and I want to ask you um, in particular, do you actually feel like the workload has increased from first year? Yes, I definitely <laughs> say the volume has increased a lot but I would also say that you adapt and you learn how to deal with the workload. So if you were to just look at it on a day-to-day -day basis, you'd say yes it's a lot but I am coping for now kind of thing. Whereas if I were to look back and be like would first year me be able to do what I'm doing now, no, absolutely yeah. not. So it comes with, yes, the volume increases, but you adapt and you grow and you learn to adjust. You learn new techniques, you learn new ways of going through work, mm -hmm. figuring out what you do know and what you don't know, what you need to work on, what are your strengths, weaknesses, etc. And I think in that way you adapt. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also a mental thing. If you constantly tell yourself you're overwhelmed and you know all of those things, sometimes it does eat at you, because I mean, that's what it did to me in first year. Mm -hmm. But if you take it and you break it into pieces and you're like, okay, I can cook with this for this day. And you'll actually see you work through it a lot more efficiently and you end up remembering more. I think the biggest thing that I like about figuring out how you work best because for me personally, and I think for most people, you, you actually refine the study technique that you use at the beginning mm -hmm. and you continue to use that just more efficiently for the yeah. rest of the so the way I started in first year is really the same way I started now. I've just managed to refine that so much so that I, I can quickly go through things. So do you think that this adjustment is helping me? Like we had to do, do you think it's helping Definitely, yeah. I agree with you guys. We adapt and we grow and instead of like set your priorities and all that, no, I can't watch the game today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just like managing your time properly and being disciplined. The last question about this, do you think that the resources on campus that you've like, seen so far have been sufficient? Um, yes and no. Yes in the sense that we know they exist and we know that it is a space that we can go to. No in the sense that I think each person finds their own way to deal with things and it may not be like if I'm going to a professional. And I think that mental health as a whole is not spoken about on campus the way it should be. It's not a constant topic of discussion. It's a very stigmatized, I don't want to say taboo, but in a way it is. No one talks about it. And I think the fear is that, okay, if I have an issue, if I'm going something, it could be seen as weak because of how yeah, competitive yeah. our degree is. Yeah. And that's why you don't talk about it. And that's why you're like, okay, well, I don't want to seek help. I'll go talk to my friend and I'd like, whenever, I'll go pop you or whatever. You know, so it's, it's just your own way of dealing with things and trying to through it, mm. I guess. So I think I just wanted to ask everyone quickly as we begin to end the office, what are some of the challenges that you've faced so far in your journey as place to your mental health So for me, the competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, you might be going through things at your own pace and working at your own pace and then you go to one of the class WhatsApp groups and you see, oh, this person is two weeks ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or well, this person is talking about a concept that I've never heard of, ever. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's sort of, it's demoralizing a bit, um, but you just have to realize that as long as you're going to your pace um, and you're getting through the work, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So competition in party swimming, as we all spoke about, that's definitely a real issue. Um, and then again, anxiety. I don't think there's a single medical student who, doesn't, who hasn't at some point dealt with anxiety. Yeah, for me, it was what Tammy said in the video, the pressure, the pressure of like, having to carry all of these things at once and just like wanting to be your best and completely just wanting to give it your all even when you're worn out and just so overwhelmed. Can I add to that? Mm -hmm. I feel like we all we all get so well at least myself. I get very <laughs> into this idea of you need to be disciplined and you need to work as hard as you can to get to where you want to be. Um, but at some point I realized that part of that discipline is knowing when to take a break. As a mindset, scheduling the break. So I think when people talk about discipline in our context, it can't just be working hard all the time, giving it to all, all the time. You need to have the discipline to know, okay, I need to stop. I need to take a couple of hours to myself. So I would say for me, what has kind of 
been difficult in the sense is the, the lack of sleep, the constant pressure, the imposter syndrome, the the whole idea of, like you said, where you look at someone else and you're so far ahead and you feel so far behind. Um, the constant comparisons that you subconsciously start doing. Mm -hmm. Because you consciously stop, like you really do try, but subconsciously it's always there. Um, where med school is always a topic of conversation amongst your friends who are in med school and you just want to breathe. It's that, it's just, it's consuming. It is all consuming. Med school is a constant conversation amongst your friends, but I want to add that it's also a constant conversation amongst your family oh. and friends that are outside of med school. And like sometimes I just want to like run away from the fact that I have this responsibility. Yeah. You know, like becoming a doctor is not just for you, it's for your whole community. And I think another source of anxiety for my mental health has actually been the pandemic. You know, because all the effects of the pandemic, for example, is studying online is not how I studied. I would for me. So all the effects of the pandemic, less social time, less people time. For some people it works, for me it doesn't. So all of that has been a huge impulse and I'm like, I still need to become this competent about so that I can like, actually help the community. But now you really in such an obscure way. We're gonna end off quickly by by me just talking a little bit about Prof. Marcy. We all know Prof. Marcy. He was the dean of our sciences um, at UCT. And it was actually like <laughs> my role model. He was one of the reasons I decided to study medicine. I think his death and his passing left me and a lot of medic other medical students so shattered. Like you look at this guy who's a giant um, in the in, in our like, career in our field and like, and he committed suicide, you know. And it left us shattered and I think I think it was very hard to deal with at that time. You know, we were in second year I think when that happened and it was just a lot, a lot was happening in the world at that time. It was just a terrible, like terrible, so many things were happening in that era with the xenophobia, the femicide, and then his passing as well. I think his death made me personally reflect on life as a well. whole. And um, it also made me, it, it began my journey of really tackling this conversation about mental health. I, while like preparing for this video, I saw this, this quote by Dr. Goodman and it says, In life, Prof. Mayosi's courage saw him shed light on many uncharted areas of medicine. And in death, he has done the same. And given people who suffer from depression, his medical colleagues in particular, license to reject the stigma that surrounds coming forward and saying, I need help. He started a chain reaction that might well save many others in his profession on the same fate. So, like, I feel like Prof. Marosi saved lives in his life, but also saved lives in his death. So, I think what we can do and what the broader community can do is really just begin to have these conversations, but also begin to say that and you know. And with that, I thank you guys so much. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you guys so much for coming to me to this video and really having these discussions, you know. And I just hope that these discussions that we had today, you guys can go out and continue having these discussions within all your respective fields and classes and for the rest of our lives. Thank you guys so much. Here is an interesting fact for you. Did you know that like a fingerprint, every human has their own unique tongue print?